talking about a specific switching sequence for the three-phase inverter. And each of the phases will be on for 50% of the time and off for 50% of the time, but their phases will be shifted by 120 degrees out of the 360 degree cycle. So this will create a balanced uh, waveform at the load. We'll go through each of the switching states and the in the order of the switching sequence, and then looking at how that translates to the output voltages in the three-phase load. Here is our three-phase inverter diagram, and we're going to be looking at a specific switching sequence for the switches, six switches here, and how they translate to the output voltages over the load. Remember, there are line-to-line -line voltages, which are between the phases, and then there's the line-to-neutral voltages, and the relationship is down here, so you can translate between line-to-neutral and line-to-line. -line. These are the tables for the different pole polarities and how they map to the different line-to-line -line voltages in the middle, and then the different line-to-neutral voltages on the right-hand side. From this table, we're going to start looking at how you put these into a certain sequence to get the output that you want. We are going to do this switching sequence. We have three different switches. There's six switches in total, but because each half bridge is complementary, you only have to define one of them. So we're defining the top switch here. So this is S1, S3, and S5. And you'll notice that each of them, for example, S1 is on for half the time, 180 degrees, and then it's turning off for the rest. And that's true for each of these, but they are not exactly in phase, they're shifted. So if we look at this one starts at zero, S1 starts at zero, S3 goes from low to high at 120 degrees, and then S5 does that same transition at 240 degrees. So they're phase shifted evenly. And we're going to look at each of these phases. So if you divide, you can kind of see these light lines here. Those are dividing from, so the whole period would start from here and go to here, right, where it starts to repeat. And if you divide each of the transitions, you see that there are going to be six different regions. We're going to go through each of those and we're going to map those onto our pole polarity diagram, and then we're going to translate that into the output voltages. We're going to start with the very first region, and Valerie is going to show us the both the pole polarity and the um, region of time. And don't worry, there are not two Valerie's, there's just one, but she's just infinitely fast in going between these two positions, so we just see two Valerie's. First, we have number one. And we can see that S1 is high, so that's a positive here. S3 is zero, so negative. And then S5, the one that corresponds to the C pole, is positive. So this is the column that it corresponds to. And then we're going to move to the next one. So first we're just going to map these out, and then we're going to look at what it does to the voltage. So now Valerie is showing us the second region, and S1 is still high, that hasn't changed, so it's positive here. Our S3 is low, actually that hasn't changed either, that's the same. The only one that actually switched is the C uh, pole, so S5. That went from high and now is low. So we have to find that on our plot here. And now we're gonna look at the next phase, and notice the only one that's actually going to change here is going to be S3. So now we're looking at the third region, and Valeria is showing us about region 3 and which column we're corresponding to. Again, positive S1. Now we switch from negative to positive on the S3, which is for the B pole, and then the S5, which is the C pole, is negative. So you can see that that maps to that. Okay, the next one, we're going to be having a transition from S1, so pole A, from high to low. So here's the fourth region and the corresponding table. 
So negative B is going to be positive, and C is going to be negative. So you can see that's the new position in the table. Okay, so let's go to the next one. Here, we're going to switch only one switch. So this is going to be S5. So we're going to see VC is going to be switching polarity. All right, so this is region 5. We have S1 is negative. S3 is positive. Um, VB would be positive. And then VC, which corresponds to S5, is going to be positive. So you can see that we moved to that position in the table. All right, there's one more. We have one more region to go to. And notice that this one is only going to have S3 changing, and that's going to go from a positive to a negative position for pole B. And Valerie is showing us where that position is on the table for that region. Negative VA, so that's S1 is low. Negative VB, so that's S3 is low. And positive VC, so the S5 is high. And notice that in each of these, two of the states are maintained, and only one is switching between one state and the other. So in the first one, we had S5 changing, then we had S3 changing, S1, and then again the same sequence over and over again. And another note is that we don't use the very first one where it's all positive or all negative, because that would give us all zeros at the output and we want to be continuously um, operating, so you're not even going to operate in either of those modes. So we have our sequence over here showing the, the sequence that we're going to use for this, and now we're going to look at the different voltage. So you can kind of map, you have to kind of plot it out, but we can look at the line-to-line -line voltages or the line-to-neutral. We're going to stick with, in this example, the line-to-line -line voltages. So let's look at that more in detail. We can go through each of the regions, and so region 1, we have this region here, and we can see we're going to get a positive VDC on phase AB, a negative VDC here, and then a zero for the VCA. And so we already have the plot plotted out, so if you go through each of these and you plot out the output voltages, what you're going to get is this bottom right waveform. And you can see that the, the ultimate waveform is more of a, a quasi-square wave. So it's going to be VDC, let's look at VAB, stays VDC high, goes down to 0 for 60, and then it's going to stay at the negative VDC for uh, 120 degrees. So each of these is shifted by 120 degrees, so we get a balanced three-phase voltage waveform over the three-phase load. Okay, to summarize, given this switching waveform where each of the switches on for 50% of the time, but each of them is phase shifted by 120 degrees, so it's evenly balanced across the 360 degree period, we can divide that up into six different operating modes, and we went through each of those. We can map those back to the pole polarities, and then from there we can map it back to the line-to-line -line voltages and the line-to-neutral voltages, but I'm just showing line-to-line -line here. Then from there you can go through each of them, map that onto the output voltage for each of the line-to-line, -line, and you can see that we get a approximately sinusoidal, so you can kind of see where the fundamental would be for each of these, generally following this waveform for each of these, B and then C, A, and they are all shifted by 120 degrees, so they would be a balanced output voltage to our three-phase load.